Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 as Communist France. In our last episode, we did get involved in our first war in Europe. Our allies, our new allies in the Soviet Union, didn't waste very much time uh, before declaring war on Poland. Their war goal is a couple of the southern Polish states here. Um, but also we're fighting Latvia at least, if not a few other people as well. Look at diplomacy here, if I can find the correct map mode. Yeah, all of these Baltic states, which is fine. I don't think we're actually going to need to help them too much. We can't actually see what the enemy troop numbers are here, but I have to imagine that they can't really stand up to the Soviets particularly well. Uh, I don't know whether this is actually going to end up in us fighting, potentially, uh, Germany. Because Germany, of course, is also attacking Poland right now. They're probably going to take uh, Danzig pretty soon, which might result in Poland capitulating in that war. Possibly not, though. They do have some other cities that are still remaining there, but we'll see, I guess. And I don't know like, if, if Poland then is annexed by Germany, then we're going to be fighting Germany, or whether our war just ends. I guess we'll find out about that as well. Uh, so I'm probably not going to send any land troops to help out, but I guess we can look at the Navy map mode and see if they need any help there or in the air section as well. I think they yeah, they have naval superiority all around here, so I don't think we need to do anything about that. Uh, they don't have air superiority in western Poland. So they may not really need it because all of their fighting is going to be in eastern Poland. So yeah, I don't think we really need to do anything. I mean, we could send ships to help them maintain naval superiority, but it's not necessary, and I think we can rebase our planes to their air bases, but I don't think it's really something that we need to do, so... In fact, we also have carriers, now that I think about it, that we could use to send some planes over. But... probably don't need to. If it seems things are going bad for them, we'll probably uh, send some kind of help, but I think that's unlikely. Um, oh, it looks like Germany has uh, pulled basically all of their troops away from the border with us, which is, I guess, good news. Means we are probably uh, safe from any attack from them anytime soon, and if we do end up at war with them, well, I was going to say, if we do end up at war with them, maybe we could quickly grab some territory here. But that's honestly probably a pretty bad idea. We should stay back on our border and uh, hide in our forts for the time being. So they're making a pretty strong push through the south here, it looks like. Though this particular battle doesn't seem to be going too well for them. But maybe they're turning it around with a few extra reinforcements there. I suppose we can actually watch this. Zog submits to Italy. An ultimatum has been delivered to the Albanian government by Italian diplomats demanding that they submit to complete military occupation. King Zog has abdicated after realizing the futility of resistance and Albania will now be ruled in a personal union under King Victor Emmanuel III. Italy looks to the Balkans, another victim of Mussolini's ambitions. Well, I, I for one, before I played this game, did not know that uh, the King of Albania in or around World War II was King Zog, but I was very pleased to learn that information. So if you didn't know that either, now you do. I'm not sure if that actually historically happened in uh, World War II, but maybe. I guess we've finished all of our naval production, so we can queue up some more ships here, I suppose. How are we doing for convoys? I don't think we're really using our existing ones. 
So, we probably don't need to build more of those. I guess we'll just build a few more uh, carriers and battleships. Well, we probably don't need carriers too much. So, let's see, we'll queue up a few of these. Uh, heavy cruisers. Maybe five of those. Maybe five or six destroyers as well. And we'll just assign our dockyards to start producing these as quickly as possible. And this reminds me as well, we do have a large amount of army experience available, which we should probably make use of. Some air experience too. Uh, let me just see here. We can make um, variants of our existing tank models. But this may not be worth doing if we're about to upgrade those in the near future. Yeah, it'll be a while before we can get better light tanks, so maybe we'll just do that for now. So this obviously um, increases the production cost, I assume, and also it'll reduce our uh, efficiency if we enact this, but I think that's okay. Um, so I don't know what we really want to focus on here. This gives us extra hard attack and soft attack, um, lower max speed, okay, so we probably want to maybe improve the engine if we're going to do any of this other stuff to compensate for the speed penalty. So this by itself costs 50. I think this is like a relatively reasonable, modest upgrade. We could upgrade those as well for an extra 100. Hmm. Maybe we don't want to spend too much on this since uh, it's not that long before we're going to be able to upgrade to the next model. So we may not get too much benefit out of that. So we'll switch over our production to Mark 1 here. It doesn't drop the efficiency too much since it's only a variant of the same model. I see a Spanish division over here. Apparently fighting on Poland's side. We've sent volunteers over there. Latvia, I see. Oh yeah, there's more up here. So they're uh, helping out the enemies of the Soviet Union, which is maybe unfortunate if we were hoping to welcome them into the common turn at some point. I suppose we should check our plane models as well and see. I think we're relatively close to being able to research new models of these. In fact, we could do it right now if we want to. So yeah, definitely not worth producing variants of those. Alright, we almost have our total needs for infantry equipment filled, I think. Oh no, we still have plenty of upgrades to do. I see. So that's fine. We're producing them a bit faster now. Our efficiency is looking better. So we have Hunt and Destroy finished. And also Engineer Company 2. So I think at this point we do want to keep one free research slot so we can get started on our land doctrines as quickly as we can. Uh, so maybe we'll leave the air doctrines for now. Um, get the next level of radar. I don't think we've built the existing radar yet. We're still ahead on this. Improved infantry equipment. Could be good. Or 
or maybe we should actually do some artillery. We have a bonus to this. So we should maybe get that started. So we'll save this slot for land doctrine. Um, currently we still have the penalty to this from our national spirit. But soon we'll be able to start making our way through there. Alright, we have free civilian factories as well. We uh, actually have started building some radar. Uh, let's queue up some more anti-air, I think. I think we have some industry around the south here. Maybe we don't need full levels of this everywhere. We'll do for now. And our allies seem to be a bit stalled out here. Uh, they're moving troops through Germany though and coming around to Poland from this side. This doesn't necessarily seem like a good idea. I think they might just be capturing territory for the Germans if they push these lines. Anyway, uh, we have completed army reform. So as well as the removal of victors of the Great War, we get some extra army experience, which is nice, and research bonuses for land doctrine. And we get uh, design companies available for armor research. Just for armor research, okay. Excellent. So we start, want to start going down the fortification line here now, and once we have this we can probably start building more forts, at, particularly on the Italian border and maybe even on the Belgian border and Luxembourg. Just make sure we can hold out against Germany if they annex Belgium, because otherwise we're pretty undefended here and there's not even any significant mountains or rivers that we can hide behind. So I think we are maybe able to switch our focus here, even though we started with a, one of the levels in Grand Battle Plan Doctrine. Though, I think it's probably just going to be better to stick with this one. So 81 days down from, I forget what it was before, 200 and something. 300 even? Definitely a good thing to wait on that. So yeah, it's just Germany's holdings that are being expanded here. So... The Soviets sending their troops this side of Poland seems like a bad idea. They should be pushing from this direction. But either way, I suspect Poland will not hold out as an independent country for much longer. Danzig has fallen, and Poland has capitulated. Adolf Hitler has announced that the cowardly Polish nation could no longer withstand the pressure from the overwhelming presence of German, German forces throughout the country. The Polish government chose to flee the country and has gone into exile. Their main forces have capitulated, and the German Reich is now in control of their home areas. Though the war against what remains of the um, faction that Poland is in, which I will not attempt to pronounce, continues elsewhere. This is a great victory for the German Reich. Great news. So it's the other Baltic nations, I think, that are in that faction. And they still remain. Alright, so I guess we get to potentially demand something in this peace deal, though we only have 10 score, so I guess we probably won't be able to actually get anything. Let's just see how much a state would cost. I mean, we could maybe... Puppet Estonia, if we get, if we pass a few rounds, we're only getting two more per round if we pass those, so it seems unlikely we're going to get ever get up to even... 44, 25 to puppet the remaining states of Poland. We'll just pass. Uh, 
as people continue to claim things. Uh, I think everyone has what they want. No. We're still claiming things. Well, we're up to 20 score, so is there anything we could potentially do? Still far away from puppeting Estonia. We can't do this. Yeah, seems unlikely. We could maybe take a state from Estonia. I'm not sure I really want this, though. Not necessarily be of much advantage to us, I think. So, I think we'll just pass on this and just say we're done. Probably the Soviets will annex it anyway. Or maybe not. Well, they did take that state anyway. So, Xinjiang joined Comintern, okay. But in this treaty, the German Reich took 14 states, Soviet Union took 6. Lithuania, Poland, and Latvia were annexed. Uh, Terra Mariana was poeted, and lots of equipment was sieged. Okay. Well, we are at peace again. I guess Terra Mariana is basically what remains of Estonia. Soviet Union is now justifying against Romania. So this could be what uh, kicks off a major war for us, because I believe the uh, world tension means that democracies will be able to guarantee Romania's independence, but also Romania will be able to join the Allies if it wants to. Or the Axis, I guess, potentially. So we'll see what happens. Get our new divisions into this army. We have a new Alpine division over there as well. I guess we'll assign to the Italian border. And Germany is strengthening its army on our borders here again. So we do want to wait for the fortification focus before we start building any more forts. We are about to get improved artillery. Uh, USSR occupies Eastern Poland. Soviet troops have occupied Eastern Poland officially for the purpose of protecting Belarusian and Ukrainian minorities from the chaos that followed the collapse of the Polish government. German forces have withdrawn from these areas in good order resulting in Poland's effective partitioning between the two powers. The frontiers of communism are advancing. So I guess that means the um, USSR got some extra territory over here. Probably this that uh, these German armies are retreating from right now, down here as well. Seems fine. It's good for us if our allies get stronger. Now have improved artillery, okay. So we'll need to uh, transition our production over to that. Uh, Anti-air attack probably is good. So we'll get this. And we have support weapons three. So he got inf uh, infantry support equipment, or infantry equipment, which uh, really only improves our motorized inf infantry and cavalry as well, I guess. Yeah, I guess we may as well get it in there, though. Oh no, I think it does improve our standard infantry attack as well. I guess we could go look. Um, I do need to transfer the 
artillery production line over to improved artillery. So we'll be dropping our production here, but that's okay. So once we're done with this uh, wave of anti-air, we're probably going to want to start, or continue rather, building more military factories. So we'll do that. Uh, I don't think we want to start transitioning our civilian factories over to military yet. trying to do there was assign this armor division over to this army and we're up to 150 political power so we did get access I think to a new tank designer which gives us reduced armor research time and armor max speed and reliability which seems good So let's get that. Obviously not actually researching any new tanks right now, but we could be getting medium tanks and it's less than a year until we can get the next upgrade to our light tanks. Which I guess we should probably get pretty soon. Uh, there's a Soviet division down here for some reason. Unable to transport to its target. I guess that's okay. You can stay where it is for now. Alright, still pretty far off upgrading all of our stuff, but our main production line for infantry equipment is up to full efficiency, or at least the full efficiency that it can currently reach. Uh, we're still upgrading fighters. So that's fine. We probably want to uh, assign more to motorized. I think we are building twice as many uh, motorized divisions as we previously were, so we're going to need more of those. Though we will be able to upgrade that to uh, mechanized at some point. wherever this is. Again, less than a year for that. Alright, so our fortification focus is 10 days away from completion. So we'll probably queue up some forts on, at the very least, the Italian border. This will give us an extra couple of levels of forts in those areas too. And then we'll go ahead and extend the Maginot Line. Ooh, Hungary has declared war on Romania. Okay. So Hungary is fascist. We have volunteers sent to Germany. But they aren't actually in the Axis. Now they're in the Axis, okay. And Romania has joined the Allies. So now the Axis is at war with the Allies, and we know that uh, the Soviets are also justifying war goals against Romania right now as well. So, um, the US still has not joined the Allies, which is, I guess, not unexpected. And obviously France has not joined the Allies, because we are going a different way. The UK has started another naval invasion of Germany over here. They didn't make much progress last time, but uh, we'll see what happens this time. So we have our fortification focus. We'll continue on to Alpine Forts. So we'll probably queue up a few more here. The Alpine Forts focus, I think, uh, 
gives us two levels of fort, so it's not going to be any wasted effort to build a few before that. How long until uh, your war goal is justified, by the way? 4th of May, okay. So it's possible that Romania might not even exist by then. Probably will, but you never know. Alright, so we upgraded our logistics company. Uh, we get signal company. What does this actually do? Extra initiative. And I think adds organization, I suppose. Recovery rates. Um, that's maybe worth doing. Sure. I mean, we do have plenty of uh, army experience. We should probably be using it to improve our divisions, so researching more support brigades we can put in there seems like a good idea. Romania rejects Soviet demands. The Soviet Union has been concentrating significant forces along its borders to Romania, and today Moscow issued an ultimatum to the Romanian government calling for the immediate transfer of Bessarabia to its control. The region once belonged to the Russian Empire, which the Soviet Union sees as sufficient legal basis for their demands in a defiant move. Bucharest has chosen to reject all Soviet territorial demands, and the Romanian army has been given the order for a complete mobilization. International observers expect Soviet forces to cross the border at any moment. Well, we'll see. Though I don't like Romania's chances of defending against two large hostile powers. They're already losing territory to Hungary. Supported, of course, by Germany. Alright, we have Grand Battle Plan, which is our land doctrine. So yeah, it is the 4th of May until they are actually going to be able to declare a war. So we'll just keep continue, uh, keep continuing along this tree, I suppose, uh, since we still have bonuses. It's going to give us extra defense and organization, which certainly is useful in our situation. Germany hasn't uh, pulled many or possibly any troops away from our border yet. Let's just see the uh, actual state of the war here. So it is just basically the UK and Romania who are at war with Germany right now. So maybe the UK is making uh, some decent inroads in this naval invasion this time. It would be nice if we could see what was going on. Maybe if we uh, actually had ships in this sea zone, we could do that. Let's see. We can tell our fleet to patrol uh, the English Channel and the Eastern North Sea. I'm not sure if this gives us vision on uh, the battles happening here or whatever, but uh, we can do it anyway. Apparently it does not. Alright, so um, the Soviets have their war goal against uh, Romania, but they have not yet actually declared. And they're currently justifying against uh, Terra Mariana up here. So maybe they're waiting for that before they declare. Either way, I guess we're going to have to find out in the next episode because we're about out of time for this one. So thanks for watching and join me again then.